It's a pleasure having you on the first Agricultural Research Council of Nigerian Television. I am Fatima Sleeman. Our special report is on presentation of mandates, challenges, and the commissioning of some projects which took place in Jos, capital city of Plateau State, the home of peace and tourism. The Permanent Secretary of Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Enes Omakihi, accompanied by the Executive Secretary of ARCN, Professor Garba Hamidu Sharubutu, went on a working visit and commissioning of some projects embarked upon by the institutes and colleges. <laughs> has the warm environment at heart. You recall when we came for the NCA, we were here together with him. He took the pain to trek around the campus here, move to Federal College of Animal Health, enter the Federal College of Veterinary and Medical Laboratory, trek around the whole of the outstation of the National Root Crop Research Institute, and ended the academic movement at the Federal College of Land Resources Technology. Apart from passion, nothing can drive somebody to do that. And today we have him uh, to look at um, most of the facilities that we have to interact with the chief executive and to make sure that he hears your successes and your cries. Why this meeting is very important is that, um, you know, as the chief accounting officer of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, he is just about to undertake one of his constitutional duties of perfecting our budget. And so the impression we give him here, either good or bad, Certainly, he does not accept anything ugly. Will make him make up his mind as to what are our own needs. Presentation of mandates and challenges was held in the Quality Control Auditorium of the National Veterinary Research Institute, VOM, where Dr. Maria Muhammad, the ED, stated that the institute produced vaccines, has 23 laboratories in Nigeria, and they provide extension services to rural farmers, among others. All I would like to say is that we are honored that you are here in our midst and you have taken the time not just to wait for us in Abuja but to come down to Vom and Kuru and to see all our projects and to understand our issues, our challenges and our successes. The Veterinary Institute in Africa, encompassing all the mandate areas of the institution. We have core values of excellence, integrity, collaboration and accountability. The key activities are around the core mandate areas. So for surveillance and diagnosis, we cover the whole country. We have a national mandate. And so in addition to this um, headquarters, we have 23 outstation laboratories um, around the country. We continue to develop research um, in, around vaccine production and other products that are useful for disease control. And like I said, we try to produce extension services, particularly to smallholder farmers, women, and the youth. Yesterday, we completed a training of um, youth as community animal health workers from Kanu, Jigawa, and Bauchi. Our surveillance activities are around most of the economically important diseases and, and also the diseases that are shared between humans, animals, and the environment. So we have quite a number, we have quite a large mandate to work with, sir. And so that is why sometimes we come with a begging bowl for additional um, support because 
um, the, we have to cover the country, we have to prioritize economic, economically important diseases and also prioritize zoonosis. We have one of three biosafety laboratory, um, uh, uh, three in this country. And maintaining that laboratory is quite a huge cost, sir. And so when we sit down to talk about it, I will um, explain more about it. Foot and mouth disease is a very important disease for us because it is affecting our, our large animal population. And it is one key disease we must control if we will develop our dairy. And we know that the ministry is very much interested in developing our local dairy. So we will need further support to be able to control this disease and to be able to produce um, a vaccine. There are vaccines that are available um, on the international markets, but their prices are very prohibitive. And so it's one of the diseases that we need to produce our own vaccines for. Monkeypox is a very important disease because it affects humans. And a part of what we are collaborating with the US CDC and the Nigerian CDC is to look at and identify the animal reservoirs. And we are the only institution that has the mandate to do that, and it's a very big responsibility. Zika virus, we are just starting. We are also the National Reference Laboratory for um, Antimicrobial Resistance, which um, together with the department and the ministry, we are working on. Now, so you are aware that there has been an alert on anthrax, and um, there has been a lot of discussion on it. As soon as we heard about the first, the, the index case actually didn't come from Ghana. It came from Mali, because they requested us to give them 20,000 doses of the anthrax vaccine. And that was when we realized that there's probably um, an issue of the disease around West Africa. So we know we have the vaccine. We believe we can control it in human in animals, and once we do that, we can also control it in humans. Right now, we have a stock of one million doses ready to be mobilized and deployed to the field. And so we think we will need further um, support to continue to produce this vaccine up to three million doses so that we can um, at least be able to control if the disease comes into the country. Our diagnostic services, as I already said, we have 23 outstations around the country, and a lot of them are in a state of disrepair. So we would like to have some support, particularly for the zonal laboratories, so that we can continue to collect samples around the country. The, the, um, the rabies lab is what we have here. We have not completed equipping it, and we would like some support to be able to finish it so that we can continue um, the work with rabies control. Provost, Federal College of Veterinary and Medical Laboratory Technology VOM, Associate Professor A.E. Okweri said, graduates of the college have an automatic license to practice under the supervision of the council. He further stated that the college is the only college under the ministry that collects animal and human samples. Provost of colleges also highlighted their challenges. The Institute of Medical Laboratory Technology of Nigeria, established in 1968, now the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria with the Act 2003, regulates the training and practice of medical laboratory science in Nigeria, registers and licenses professional members of the council. And I'd like to state at this point that this regulatory body has been charged with the responsibility of controlling some of the uh, courses we are running. And then, despite the fact that we have the facilities, we have the structure, we have the personnel, we are under restriction to carry specified number of students. Some of our classes, if you have time to see, we can admit, you know, we can keep well over 50 uh, to 70 students in the class. But the council had placed restriction that within a year, we cannot take more than 70. And I did mention that sometime during your last visit. And uh, we, uh, I think it was agreed that the uh, Honorable Minister of Health will be contacted.
because we are seriously under restriction, so we cannot take more than what they approve for us. The mission of the college is to be the foremost college of veterinary and medical laboratory technology in Africa, producing internationally acceptable graduates that are skillfully equipped to carry out veterinary and medical laboratory diagnosis of all diseases of animal and man, production of vaccines and biologicals, international refuse, research and teaching through a well-programmed training using the facilities and human, and human resources available at the College and National Veterinary Research Institute. At this point, I'd like to state that this college is the only zoonotic training institution in Nigeria under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Now, we are handling animal and human samples in Paris Pasu. So any teaching hospital in this country can be compared with this. It's just that teaching hospitals are restricted to human you know, diagnosis. But we, are, we have benches for animal diagnosis and then human diagnosis. And I can assure you, even this morning, that within 10 minutes, we can take a sample and give you about 20, 28 laboratory tests in five minutes. We have that automated machines for animals. We have it also for human. I'd like to let you know, sir, in the past, if you don't have a degree, you don't come to this college. You come here only when you have a degree. But due to certain challenges, we have not been able to meet up accreditation requirement via budgetary allocation. And you can imagine for a very long time, we, we've been training, uh, uh, releasing people from here with degree via the university, and suddenly it was put on hold because we couldn't meet up. This had been regularly carried in our budget, but we, the budgetary allocation had not been you know, enough to meet up the challenges in the college. So, a certification. The Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria satisfies graduates of this college, licenses them. And the college has a full accreditation status for all the program in medical laboratory science. It also has approval for MBT, a horicon, and Bahia to run environmental health technology, environmental health technician, environmental health assistant, OND, HND, public health, OND, HND, epidemiology and disease control, and then OND, HND, environmental science, management. These courses are currently running. As I'm talking to you, our attention is needed by 7 o'clock, by jam in Abuja tomorrow. The ES is aware of this. Uh, because of some of these courses we are running, and we are trying to normalize things via jam so that graduates of the college can go you know, without hitches for NYC. In 1980, the school was accorded a college status and renamed College of Animal Health and Health Management with mandate to award ordinary as higher diplomas in animal health and production. And the establishment of NBT by the federal government to regulate the award of national and higher national diplomas in 1980, the college successfully hosted the first NBT accreditation of the station in 1983. However, in 1988, the diploma program as NDIHN of the college was suspended due to inadequate facilities. On the 29th January 1991, the college was again renamed to the College of Animal Health and Production Technology. The name is very Presently, the college operates a general system with five schools, each accredited by a team, and to have programs fully accredited by NPT and other regulatory bodies. The degree establishing the college was the National Science Technology and Learning Degree of 1990 and the ASEAN Amendment Act 
have been properly placed where they're supposed to be. Um, in December, we decided that we must know what has been on ground. So we appointed consultants to evaluate the true status of all abandoned projects and movable assets in the college. This is to give the management an idea of the challenges at hand so that we can develop a strategy to overcome it. And uh, one of the strategies is what I explained to you when I came to give the instant um, uh, report. Uh, on getting on campus, we discovered that there is no official vehicle to be used. Even the provost doesn't have a vehicle. So the only ILOX that is available, we quickly rehabilitate. And um, as of now, we've been able to put two other vehicles, three other vehicles back on the road. Uh, so the provost, the registrar, the bossa, we share one vehicle. So that whenever we travel, we put ourselves together. Um, my permanent secretary, sir, you might not know this building, but when you get there, you will know what I'm talking about. This was a building in which you visited at that time. We've been able to, re at least with the little resources available from January to date, we've been able to, I mean, renovate, and we feel it is necessary to come and commission it. We've been able to put a lot of things in place, um, little uh, office furniture and so many other things have been there. I'm very happy that you are here. Even if this rain is going to disturb us, sir, you'll be there. In response to their request, the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Enes Omakihi, assured the institutions of getting intervention, thereafter gave advice to heads of institutes and colleges. Well, it's important that uh, when we are presenting this, we also see your efforts at generating resources. If our government wants to encourage you to generate a lot. Because as much as possible, it's only what government demands presently is uh, just at least 25% of your IGR. So it's important you generate more to take care of uh, to take care of your the problems and challenges here. Uh, I, as a way of general statements, somebody mentioned the, your exclusion from TED fund, and uh, now that uh, the NAD fund, NADF, has come to stay, that will be your third fund. The, the, the body, the, in fact, the management has been constituted. There was a board, but of course, the board cannot stay with uh, the last uh, presidential directive. But we have a management structure already in place. Uh, when they came to me and were telling me some flagship program they want to embark on, I just said, take them away. I'm not interested in your programs. I thought you are coming to bring soccer to the stakeholders. And who are the stakeholders? The research institutions, the training colleges, and of course, every other stakeholder in the agricultural field. Not for you to run parallel programs. Yes. So that funds is available for all of us to tap in. And uh, by the grace of God, by the time it's fully implement, implemented, we have uh, percentages of uh, levies and deductions they will be getting from other revenue coming to the government. So it will be a, a source of fund for all of us to add to our budgetary provisions. The way, the way we are going, budget, budget we keep reducing because government has no revenue at all. It's revenue challenge. Well, you hear mostly that our current earnings, what we get as revenue, can hardly pay interest on our loans. Interest. I would like that word interest. So we, must, we, we cannot expect more from even what we are getting. So it's for us to look inwards. And I'm talking of partnership and collaboration. You must have most open leakages with development partners, especially those in the animal heads. With this one head, one head policy, you know, development partners, they jump at 
every challenge in the animal and the human health sector. And they'll be ready to collaborate. And for us, I have a lot of services. And I was so happy when uh, the ED talked of uh, your program of science to production. That is what most uh, research institutions do these days. For me, I would say you go from research to development, to production, then to commercialization. You'll be able to do it. Arrow the PC. Just uh, cram it so that you can go and implement it. Every one of you, especially in the research setup, uh, I see a lot of services and products that you, have, you churn out every day from the laboratory. Produce them and let's commercialize. The off-takers are there to make this a business of their own. Business, real business. And uh, I, I'm a board member of IITA. There is what they do. Once they develop some of these products in the laboratory, they commercialize it. Companies are set up. Where you don't have spin-off companies, you have off-taker. And you are a shareholder. The, the, the institution becomes a shareholder in that company. So I think that approach is very important for us. In an effort to provide accommodation to the female students, the Federal College of Veterinary and Medical Laboratory Technology commissioned female hostels. Government of Nigeria to commission this female hostel of the Federal College of Veterinary and uh, Medical Laboratory Technology here in Jos. It's a welcome development and uh, the government will always want students to be comfortable, be in a healthy and comfortable environment with all the amenities provided, which I'm sure you have done. So it's my pleasure and privilege to declare this post commission. This female hostel was commissioned by Dr. Ernest Omakia, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Abuja, on Friday, 23rd June, 2023. Congratulations. In order to decongest the staff in the administrative block, the Federal College of Land Resources Technology commissioned the administrative unit of the college, which has various offices and convenience and it was named after the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Enes Umaikihi, of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. I think where are we going to? <laughs> where are we going to? And uh, he has told me this is the administrative block. And I said, what a mess this looks like. But today I'm seeing something very different. So it's my pleasure, former privilege, to talk to this day to declare this uh, renovated office block open and commissioned. So it's to the glory of God and to our great nation Nigeria and the citizenry and the entire agricultural sector that I call this state to commission this refurbished, renovated complex. That's our special report on the working visit of the Permanent Secretary and the commissioning of some projects. Congratulations to them on this great achievement. I remain Fatima Suleiman saying see you next time.